Okay, hi everyone, it's um, Jess with Kinder Stample, and today I'm going to be doing a fun mini album for um, Helmar USA. If you guys were able to log on earlier, you got a chance to meet Tracy and the Glue family, so I hope you guys had a really, really fun time doing that. Um, now we're just kind of going to get our glue on. I have a really fun project that just kind of popped in my head last night while I was sitting in my room. I know, I, I just admitted that I waited till the evening before the show to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I did and I love the way it came out so I hope you guys love it too um, I don't know if you guys heard earlier but um, Glue Dad who's Tracy's um, dad and Tracy is the president of Hallmark USA created an awesome Glue Daddy Caddy and if you guys are wondering what that is I'll go ahead and put the link to their Etsy store and you'll see um, what the product looks like. It's an awesome caddy that you can alter to put all of your Helmar products. So um, there's a limited number of, um, of products out there. So if you guys miss out on them, feel free to just send a note to Tracy and she'll be sure to add more so you guys get a chance at getting them. I'll go ahead and put her, her email address here as well. So you guys can go ahead and email her if you have any questions. And then one more thing before we get started. I don't know if you guys have heard but um, Tracy and I are headed to CHA next week. Um, it was a very last minute spontaneous kind of action on my part and I am so, so, so excited that I'm going to be able to go to CHA. So if you guys will be at CHA, um, definitely send us an email. You can send an email to Tracy at info at HelmarUSA.com or send me an, um, an email at info at kindersample.com and we'll definitely do our utmost to try to meet up with as much of you as possible. Oh, and yes, ah, you beat me to it. Um, today is Christina from um, YourMemoriesHere.com's birthday. So if you guys want to wish her a happy birthday, go right ahead. Um, she's one of the awesome online retailers that carries Hallmark. So if you guys are interested in purchasing Hallmark, um, you can reach out to her. We also have a couple of other retailers on here, so if they would like to go ahead and link up um, their sites, go ahead and put them on here. And if you um, aren't familiar with the Helmar products, I will definitely be showing you what they are very shortly. But there is um, a section on the Helmar page where you can find out if one of your local retailers is selling it. So I'll go ahead and put the link to the site again so you guys can go ahead and check it out if you need to and if your retailer does not sell Helmar you can um, reach out to them and say how they absolutely need to carry Helmar so that it can be available for you anytime you need it so um, if you have if you know of any retailers that might be interested in carrying it definitely send a note to Tracy again at Helmar um, info at Helmar USA so hey Tracy <laughs> so we got Tracy to log on so because I knew that Tracy was going to go a little bit over tonight, she was a bad girl, um, I went ahead and did a lot of pre-cutting and pre-measuring for you guys. So here goes my little cheat note. You guys can't see it, but it's all the measurements for the project that we're going to be working on. And I'm going to go ahead and show it to you really quickly. And I'll show it this way, see if you guys can see it. Uh, maybe it's not such a good view. Let me switch cameras so you guys can see the product, the project, and then I'll go ahead and um, walk you guys through it. Uh, let's switch cameras. Here we go. And let me just zoom out a little bit so that you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, so there goes that. All right, let me know if you can see it okay. Okay, I don't have any moderators right now, so if anyone wants to volunteer to be a moderator, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. I know a lot of times you guys have questions, so I will try my best to go and look at um, the chat and answer as much as I can. But if I'm not able to answer your question immediately, feel free to put it on the Facebook page or email um, Tracy or myself, and we'll definitely get back to you as soon as we can. If you knew what to do, you would volunteer. <laughs> Christina's going to volunteer. Awesome. Oh, it's her birthday, and she's she's working. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so Christina's our honorary moderator for today. So let me... 
Okay, so let me go ahead and um, get all of my glues out and kind of show you everything that I have and what I'm going to be working with. I think I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Where did I put that glue? Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you all of the products that I'm going to be using. Um, a lot of it I will be using the craft glue on, but I'll show you how you can use these other products as well for a lot of the pieces within this project. So let me just show you what they are. This one is the Helmar Professional Acid Free Glue. It's awesome for doing uh, mini albums, cards, any paper projects. It works really, really well. It dries clear. It doesn't have any, any yellowing. And um, it's just really awesome. The other one is the Helmar 450 Quick Dry Adhesive. You guys know that I absolutely love this. Um, it's really awesome for doing those quick projects like when you're making like ribbon flowers or putting ribbons or making flowers that look like this. It literally dries in seconds and it just holds like forever. I know you guys have seen me done, do this before. But I mean, I'm trying to crush this flower right now so you guys can see how durable and sturdy it is. So. This is really, really awesome. And it's perfect when you're doing one of those last minute projects. I know I tend to do a lot of those last minute cards and mini albums to give to my friends. I just sold myself out out there. And this is one of those things that you can do it 30 minutes before that event and it'll be ready to go. So that's a really awesome product. Craft Glue is um, my next favorite product to use on paper crafts. I will use it a lot on this project because um, it's kind of like 450, but it doesn't dry as fast as 450. So I like that. It gives me the flexibility to move things around a little bit if I have to. So I love that. Scrap Dots is absolutely awesome. This is a three-dimensional acid-free um, glue. And I'll show you how I use it. It's really awesome to add dimension to kind of odd-shaped um, pieces. But one of the things that I love, love, love is that you can use it to adhere any kind of metal charm. Um, it works awesome and it never falls off. It also works really perfect for gluing these giant flowers like this um, because it holds them perfectly on. So the second you put it on, it's not wobbling. You don't need to hold it. So it's perfect. And then the other two things I'm going to be using are these um, zap dots. And these are also acid free and they're dimension, dimensionals. And these are the square ones. So I'm using the quarter inch and the half inch ones on here. And they come in, I think, three different, in two different, actually three colors. There's a white, a black, and a clear. And then they also come in two different shapes. So you'll get either circles or squares um, if you like. So those are the options. And I use all of them. I am just happen to be using white ones for this project. So do you guys have any questions so far about the products? And then I'll go ahead and show you the project. You want them? <laughs> Yeah, you absolutely need all these. They're just awesome. I can't work without them. There's actually a bunch of other stuff. I'll show you one more thing that I have right by my desk. Um, maybe it's not right here. Uh, where is it right there? I know it's here somewhere. Here goes the awesome tape runner. Two of you guys haven't seen that. And what else do I have? Let me see. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it goes. The gemstone glue. I ha didn't use any gemstones on here, but this works really awesome to put any down any gemstones. And of course, Palmer also has. Let me see. The Crackle Medium, which is another awesome product, and I'm sure I'll be showing you a project with this really soon. And for those of you that haven't been on the show before, if you have a Cricut or if you love using vellum, um, these two products are a must-have. This is a V2 adhesive, which is awesome for resticking your Cricut mats or any kind of any of your electronic um, side cutting machine mats. And this is awesome for removing that yucky, sticky glue that gets on there. So. Just wanted to share these two things with you before I get started. It's, you don't use it only for the Cricut. It works really awesome for that, but it's perfect for vellum. Um, it's perfect for getting glue off your hands, off of your table. It's just a really awesome product. 
So those are the other two things. Let me just put them away. You hate mats? <laughs> I hated them too until I found those two products. Now that I know that I can clean them all the time, um, I don't hate them as much. <laughs> Yep, it's awesome for spraying on the back of papers too. It is a it's a super versatile um product. Those are just some of the things that I've used it before for. So do you guys have any questions? Hey Carrie. Okay, so now I got a commercial so far. Am I going to make that flower tonight? I'm not going to make this flower, only because of lack of time. I didn't pre-cut it, but I promised to do another class um, to show you how I did it. I actually have done a class before just doing these flowers, so if you guys have missed it, um, you can go ahead and look for it. I think it's on my personal um, page, but it's featuring all of the Hellmark products. So if you go on, I think it's um, Ustream.tv. Um, slash channel slash kinder sample you'll see how I used Helmar to make these really beautiful flowers okay so let's go ahead since no one has any more questions I'll move these things over to the side and I'll show you the mini album that I created and I hope I can fit it in um, in the screen so it's it's kind of an awkward shape, right? And I'm going to tell you the reason why I was able to do this. I wanted to put together a bunch of fun projects to, um, to take to some of my crafty friends at CHA. But you know how you have very limited space in your suitcase, especially when you have a carry-on. So I wanted something that was going to be really thin, had a lot of real estate inside, and I wasn't going to have to use a lot, right? So this is basically an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that's cut in half. It's actually just folded in half and it has a gusset. So there is some space for you to put stuff inside. And then I just used some awesome DCWV paper to cover it up. I put a fun sentiment on here. I used one of my favorite Unity stamps on here, which is the birdcage. And then I put this fun flower. So the most dimension that's on here is really that flower. So again, really good for shipping out as well. You can put it into a really nice size envelope and just really awesome to make for a lot of folks. Yeah, it's just a really fun size. It's um, eight and a half by 11 and it's just folded in half with this spine. Yep, this is the lemon paper. It's called, um, I'm not, I can't find the, the stack right now because I'm going to be using a different one today, but um, it is definitely that one. <laughs> DCWB. So let me go ahead and open it. So this is just some, um, what is this thing called? It's um, cotton twill, and this one happens to be in yellow, so it coordinates with the, um, the mini. So when you open it up, this is basically what you have inside. And what I decided to call it was a file folder pocket mini album. I know it sounds a little weird. But um, this is what it is. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pockets, right? And they're all layered on top of each other. And the other thing, I wish I could show you guys um, where my brain was going with this last night. I have one of those magazine racks on my wall, um, and it has these pockets like this, and they kind of collapse on top of each other. And that's basically what I was staring at when I came up with this project. So just really fun. And then I just put these. Um, these mats inside, obviously I just used white for here, um, but you can use any color you want. And it's just a lot of real estate because you can put something on the front, something on the back, um, something on the front of the pocket as well. So I didn't really alter um, the inside of this a lot, but you can see how there's a lot of real estate on here. So, so just the eight pockets. <laughs> So do you guys have any questions or should I go ahead and get started? I'm going to run through um, the sizes as I go through the class. Um, so if you have any questions, ask me. But it, again, it's um, the, the measurements are pretty simple. Everything is pretty much cut at a quarter inch smaller than, than the previous size. So just so you guys have that. 
um, in mind. And the paper stack that I'm going to be using, I happen to have gone to my local um, scrapbook store. Yep, I'm recording, Sandy. And I found this paper stack, and I thought it was so cute. It's called, it's by DCWV, and it's the baby girl stack. And what I loved about it was that it had um, greens and yellows and oranges and, and pinks, but it really wasn't that much baby girlish. So it's just a lot of, I'll show you guys just really whimsical papers inside and the only thing that I found that was really um, specific to the baby girl was I think some of these little oh here we go the little journaling spots so this was perfect for me to use for what I wanted so that's what we're gonna be working with yeah it's super sweet and again the reason why I was looking for that paper is because I have these really pretty flowers here and I pre-made like six or seven of these and I wanted to use them for the minis but I didn't have a coordinating paper so that's why I went out and picked up that um, stack of paper so it was all because of this one flower I'm sure you guys do that too so <laughs> so let me move these things over here and we'll go ahead and get started so I'll move this over here move my little flowers just make a little bit of space here. Okay, so here goes my stack of stuff that I pre-stamped, pre-cut, and pre-did everything we needed to do. So here goes um, the base of our mini album. Yeah, I totally need a caddy. <laughs> because right now I would just have them completely flipped over and I would be working with these. <laughs> All right, so this is eight and a half by 11, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna score it at the four inch mark, and at the four, let me just make sure this is right, because now I think I didn't measure it correctly. Yep, at the four inch mark, and at the four and a half inch mark. Good night, Tracy. So this base is super easy to do, and I love, I mean, one of the things is a lot of times I have a lot of stacks of papers in my room and I don't use them very often. So I wanted to use a lot of my eight and a half um, by 11 papers. And this was just a fun way to use them and make a mini album without wasting those sheets. So, so I'm just creasing it. Yep, eight and a half by 11 scored at four, four and a half. So now we have this, right? And the reason why I did um, this little lip here is because I know that I didn't embellish it, but if you guys wanted to go ahead and put some charms or stamp it or add some flowers here, you absolutely could because there would be enough room for you to um, kind of junk it up a little bit and still have room to, um, to tie it. So that's why I left this little lip here. And obviously, if you want to leave it wider, you can. You just need to adjust your measurements. So there goes the base. And then the next things we did was I for some strange reason I really love working with craft paper. I don't know if you guys have noticed that yet. You probably have. Um, but I wanted to put a, something behind my pattern paper that was just really gonna pop out. So I decided I was gonna put a thin um, border of black. So these two borders here, and let me just grab. We're going to use four because we're going to put two on the outside and two on the inside. <laughs> I know, Tanya, I don't like crafts, right? <laughs> so the black paper is going to be cut at three and three quarters by ten and three quarters. So again, um, if you guys missed it earlier, basically all of these layers are cut a quarter inch shorter than, um, than what your base is. So let's assume that this is, what is this? This is four by, um, by 11, so it's four inches wide by 11. So all you do is you take off the quarter off and it becomes three and three quarters. Then this is 11 and it becomes 10 and three quarters. So you see, it, I didn't use too much scientific measurements for this. Because again, I wanted to be able to make these and just make a ton of them. And I still wanted it to look really cute. So now I'm gonna be using my craft glue because I really love this. Um, so I'm just going to put a little thin layer around the border and then I just do like a little zigzag in the middle. You don't need very much of this for it to adhere so.
Let me see if I can put a better base down here so you guys can see it. Um, let me zoom out a little bit more. I want to make sure you guys... Ah. Not working so well. Okay, we'll go with that. And then we're just going to do this on the front and on the on the inside of this album. So again, just zigzag in the middle. And then I don't know if you guys um, can tell, but because I only cut a quarter inch shorter um, than my base, we only have an eighth of an inch around the border. So, so now I'm just turning it on the inside and I'm going to put these layers in as well. Yeah, this is one of those fun projects. Yeah, I love craft because that's exactly it. It's basically my neutral. It works with everything. So I love that. But what I love about this mini album too is lately I've been I've been getting into the whole thing about how I need to use all of my scraps. And it's perfect for using all of your scrap papers. I don't know if you guys noticed, but DCWB had this, um, not a contest, but it was just kind of like a post on their page asking folks to um, put photos of all of their paper stacks <laughs> and I don't know if you guys got a chance to see the photos but oh my goodness some people had like ginormous amount of paper stacks so I wish I had even a tenth of half the paper that everyone had <laughs> I would have so much fun gluing that on so okay so here we go so now this is it, the album is folded, right? So we have the black on the inside and on the outside. And the reason why I also put these layers on is because it's just going to give some weight to the paper without using chipboard. So that's another reason why I did that. So do you guys have any questions so far? I think that's a little bit better. Amanda has a question. Okay, I think you were able to answer the question already, Christina. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is I cut out two pieces of pattern paper. And let me see, where's my pattern paper? There we go. So here go my two pieces of pattern paper. And you know me, I need to ink everything up. So of course I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Distress Ink for this. And I use Vintage Photo because I'm addicted to, <laughs> to Vintage Photo. So if you guys are at CHA and you look in my bag, you'll notice that I won't. The only thing that I will have in my bag is my distressing tool. <laughs> And my distress ink. And of course, I'll have my Homer stuff with me as well. But I won't have any other tools. Those are the only things I need. I can always borrow um, scissors and cutters and that kind of stuff. So I'm just um, inking out the edges. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to, I don't like the white edges. Um, and I like everything to look a little vintagey distressed. I know some folks have said that they don't really like. Um, distressing because it makes it looks look dirty sometimes but actually I love that so <laughs> so now I'm gonna turn it around and this is the front and the back right so you see you guys can tell that's the front and the back and that's where I'm putting the pattern paper on the front and the back of the album so uh, I'm looking for something here okay so now we're just gonna go ahead and use our craft glue again And I think for this type of project, um, you, you want to use a paper that's not double-sided because, again, I felt like if I was using a double-sided paper on here, I was kind of wasting it. So I was really looking for a stack that had um, paper that wasn't double-sided. So you're just going to um, add some glue on here and then 
can adhere that. Yeah, I totally agree, Tinker. I think it, it often gives stuff a really soft look. Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys are familiar with my style. It's kind of crazy. Um, but it always, I always tend to do very vintage shabby shiki somehow. And trust me, it's not on purpose. <laughs> So here we go. So now, lots more with this glue. Um, you don't need to use very much glue. And what I love is that I put I put the tip of my my glue right on the paper, and I just squeeze very lightly, and I just kind of roll. Um, and I don't put out a lot of glue. And I love that because I don't have to use a lot of glue and it works perfectly. You guys didn't saw, it's not like I'm rubbing on here, pressing down. I, ha I literally haven't even pressed down on here. And the papers are perfectly adhered, right? So now we have our front, our back, and our inside done. Yep, smear around with the tip. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> I know I need a glue caddy. <laughs> I'm going to be lobbying for one. Don't you worry, ladies. <laughs> Let me just clear out this, this ad. Okay, so now the next thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the spine. So we'll turn it again back to the front of the back. And I'm going to put some paper here, again, because I just want to add some weight and just embellish it a little bit more. So my spine is going to be cut. I'm going to cut, let's see, um, a black strip of paper at 3 eighths of an inch by 10 and 3 quarters. So it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch. Again, it's just um, a quarter of an inch thinner than what this is. And then um, 10 and 3 quarters, which is exactly the same length as the black one I cut for this side. So let me see where I have that. I know it's in here somewhere. Okay, so those are pre-cut. And then my pattern paper here, I cut at, oh, sorry. The pattern paper is at 3 eighths of an inch by 10 and 3 quarters. And the black strip is cut at a quarter inch. No, lava, sorry. <laughs> black is cut at 3 eighths by 10 and 3 quarters. And the pattern is 1 quarter inch by 10 and a half. Sorry, I'm having... A moment now so again I'm just gonna ink this up should I repeat that guys? <laughs> black at 3 eighths of an inch by 10 and 3 quarters and then the pattern is a quarter inch by 10 and a half <laughs> what color is the distress ink it's just vintage photo so there we go I'll show you guys it's vintage photo. It's funny because I, I've seen a lot of folks um, do um, use Tim Holtz distress inks, and everyone has like a different favorite. It's so funny to see who likes what. And so again, I'm going to be using um, the craft glue, and I'm just going to put a little bit from top to bottom. And then I'm just going to align it in the center here somehow. So there. Isn't this a pretty paper? I love this. I wanted it to kind of have pay, um, that very paisley look on it, but I didn't want it to look like very old so it's kind of like a little more contemporary um, because of the colors and then we're just gonna put our pattern paper right in the center like that Okay, so now we have our front, our spine, and our back finished, and now the inside. 
And then I also cut out a piece of black to put in the center here. That's where you get in trouble, Cindy. You know what? There's no perfect way to line up. If you if you don't line it up perfectly, that's okay. I don't think I think we're as crafters, we tend to be a little bit more anal about the way we do things. But honestly, I don't think the folks who receive it really notice those very minute imperfections. Because I know sometimes I'll like send something to like my mom and I'll say, oh my goodness, I'm did you notice that my flower wasn't like perfectly to the right? And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just think it looks beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, I know, I know, I know, Sandy, I know. Hence why you see me, I'm like over here measuring while you guys <laughs> are chatting. So there, so now I have that center there too. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Okay, so now the base of our mini album is pretty much complete. So I'm going to put this over to the side, and then we're going to work on the pockets, which are probably the other easiest part of this. You'll notice that this is one of those things that once you get into full swing of it, um, you can really go into production and just make a whole bunch of them. So I have eight of these cut out, and these are, let's see. Um, what did I do for these? Okay, so the pockets are cut at three and a half by four and three quarters. And here's the most technical part of this mini album. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Martha Stewart scoreboard. And any scoring tool you have works perfect for this. I just happen to use this one. Let's see if I can make some space on my desk. Yep, these are three and a half by four and three quarters. And then this is what you guys are going to do. You're going to get your scoring tool, and you're going to put your paper on the longest side, right? And you're going to score at a half inch on one side. You're going to flip it. You're going to score at a half inch again. And then you're going to flip it again and score at a half inch. So you're basically scoring it at a half an inch on three sides. The top one side will not will not have a score line. So again, it doesn't matter which side it is that you don't score as long as you only have three sides scored at half an inch. Did you guys get that? I'm going to do all of them because of course this is the one thing that I didn't pre-do, but you'll see how easy this is. I'm literally just turning it three times and scoring on the half an inch line. And it doesn't matter which way you turn or which way you start, as long as it's only um, three sides. And oh, this probably makes a difference. Only t the two um, shorter sides are scored and only one of the longer sides. So two, the two shorter and the one longer. That, that's actually a good point. Yep. Yep, the two shorter and one longer. So I have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I know Christina's awesome. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions while I score these up. <laughs> okay, so let's see if I have enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we have eight done. Let me just put these back in here so I don't lose them. And now I no longer need my scoring tool, so I'll move this over to the side. But I'm going to still use my bone folder. So here goes again, the second most technical part of this whole project. There goes my scissors, and you guys know I love my Westcott scissors because they're nonstick, so I love using those. So here's what we're going to do. The easiest way for me to show you is 
You see these are the two shorter sides and this is the part that's scored on the bottom. You're going to cut out this little box here and I'll show you two ways of doing this. So you can cut out this little box here on the corner. Right? So we have that. You can cut that out. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on its side and you see this is where the point meets. So this is where the score marks are going to fold. I just kind of cut two triangles so that it looks like that now. So now when I fold it under, can you guys see that? It creates something that looks like that. Did you see that? So then again, I'm just going to take my scissors and on an angle cut right to the point. So I'm cutting on an angle on the point. Yep, exactly. Miter corners. That's exactly what you're doing. So um, that's how I did this one. So you can cut out the square first and then miter the corners or you can go the lazy way which is how I do it and I just take my scissor and I, you know what, we can probably just draw, um, let me draw it so you guys can see it. You can probably just grab your ruler and just draw a little line along the way like this too and then just cut that corner off which is kind of what I do but I kind of just eye it because that part is going to go in the back anyway so and then you're going to end up with something that looks kind of like a jean pocket just a little short jean pocket <laughs> so let's go ahead and cut all of these off Do you guys have any questions about that? So I'm just cutting these corners off. It's really simple to do. You can also, if I, I wish I would have saved another one. If you just folded it back and had the, um, had them uncut, you can just cut the corners there too, right off the paper, just kind of like that, and then you would get the same effect as well. So. Good night, Jean. Thank you so much for joining. So I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning up here and then just score these now. So now I'm just going to score all of these back and then ink. I wish I would have done a little, a bit of these earlier, but I didn't. But hopefully I can finish them pretty quick. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Jean. So there we go. Okay, let me move all these Timmy tools. They seem to all be in the way now. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions as I fold these up? Oh, Sandy, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> You're amazing for even being up this late. I know I would be snoring at this point. <laughs> I know, isn't it amazing? <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know, Sandy's in the UK. So the fact that she's on here this late at 3.30 in the morning, it's just... Amazing. She's so sweet.
Oh my goodness, you're working on a lot of stuff. <laughs> it kind of sounds like my world. I wish I had some stuff that I can share. I have a bunch of stuff all over the place. I don't know if you guys noticed my back wall when I showed you. I have all these tags that I have to take to CHA. And today, just really quick, I made these really quick cards. They're just samples for a booth. <laughs> And then there's just a bunch of stuff going on everywhere. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so again, here goes Timmy again. And you know, there's no white corners on this, but I just want for consistency purposes for everything to have that same distressed um, edge. So, I think that if you're trying out Hallmark for the first time, um, Craft Glue 450 and Scrap Dots are just awesome. That's like my the first three things I would absolutely buy. <laughs> oh, and the Zap Dots. And those are so inexpensive, and they work so awesome. So just inking away here. Scrap Dots. Scrap dots and zap dots. Let me show you what they are. Scrap dots, perfect for gluing on any like funky sides embellishment. That's what I use to glue the flower and for any metal embellishments and just for fun um, dimension. And then the zap dots, which are just the um, the normal dimensionals. Okay, so we're done inking those up. And now, again, I pre-cut my pattern paper, which is just going to be what I'm going to glue on the front of this. So where's my little cheat sheet again? So my pattern paper is cut at, let's see, did I cut this right? At two and three quarters by three and a half. So two and three quarters by three and a half is what I cut for um, the pattern paper. And again, I'm just using some of this yummy paper in just random colors. They all coordinate, which is really great. Is this your first you stream, Amanda? I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> so yeah, two and three quarters by three and a half. So again. This base right here is three and a half by four and three quarters. And that's because it has these extra little flaps on here. But when you fold it up and you have this base right here, this will glue in perfectly like that. And it's two and three quarters by three and a half. Oh, I'm so glad you're loving it, Linda. <laughs> so now we're just gonna glue these on and again, as long as you have, you can do whatever you like. For this particular project, I just chose to cut two pieces of each, and I'm just going to alternate them on the inside. So again, I'm just putting a little bit of glue and then just zigzagging it in the middle. And then I'm just going to adhere it. And of course, look, I didn't cut it correctly. <laughs> Are all of these cut the same size? Yes, all of them, except that piece, of course. <laughs> All right, so let's clean this up and get to gluing again. Okay, let me find another piece of that one. Isn't that funny? I did all, all of that pre-cutting, and then, of course, I didn't cut it correctly. <laughs> all right, let me make sure of that. Which one was it? Hmm... Oh, it's this one. Okay. Let me find it. Here we go. <laughs> See? Even when you try to make it 100%, sometimes you goof it up. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm just gluing it again. And this one is actually cut perfectly. So. See? Now you have just an eighth of an inch around um, showing off the craft. <laughs> oh, 
I know. It, but the worst is when you're like, you go into like production mode, which I have been doing, um, <laughs> and you cut a bunch of them, and then you realize after you've cut a bunch of them that you've cut a bunch of them wrong. <laughs> I know. Isn't craft paper awesome? I wish I could show you guys. If you were in my craft room right now and you were trying to figure out what's the most paper I have, it's craft paper. I have it by the stack, stack loads of it because I know I can use it for everything. Those sample cards that I made earlier, every single one of them is um, a craft card. <laughs> so everything is really monotone. You're making 24 4x4s, Sandy? <gasps> 4x4 four four pages, right? Not 24 4x4 four four mini albums, right? Because oh, that would be crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, okay. 24 already is a lot. Imagine it was 24 mini albums. Oh my goodness. I'm making um, tags for, for swapping at CHA and of course I don't have them in front of me. I wish I had one. But I'm so far I've made like 50 of them. And I'm just having, here goes one, but this one's not complete of course. Some you guys may have seen it already. Just a really fun tag. And then I put together like little mini kits with it. Um, I'll share it with you guys next time. So let's see, let's just keep gluing and Moving along. <laughs> so you guys see this was really easy to do. This is one of those projects that if, if you have kids and you cut them out, they can absolutely help you put it together because it's like very easy to figure out what pieces go where. So just lots of fun. Crafter beige is in. Yeah, I barely, I use white very, not very often, but I'll show you what I use it for. And I'll show it to you in a second once I do um, my stamping. Anytime that I'm distressing um, a stamped image, I like using it because it's just a solid blank canvas on the back. So I love that. So, so here goes um, the pages. And all I'm going to do is the pockets, I'm going to lay them out. Let's see what I did here. Okay, so this like this. And like that. And then what I'm going to do on the opposite side is the exact opposite. So I put the green on the bottom, now I'm going to put it on the top. No science to this. Ah, just lost one. Wow, this one is really trying to run away from me. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So this is going to be my right side. This is going to be my left. So I'm just going to stack them up. And now I have them in order. So when I put them out in the book, hopefully they'll lay out the way that I just planned. <laughs> So now we'll grab our book again. And in this case, it doesn't matter which is the top or which is the bottom because I happen to use a pattern paper. But if you have a pattern paper where you want it to be where this, it has words or something, obviously you want to make sure you, you figure out which is the top and the bottom. But in this case, it doesn't matter. Each, either side works perfectly. So then let's see. Let's just grab these four. And what I did for this was I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of do a little informal measuring on here. Um, I lay it out and then I just do a little pencil mark once I glue them so that I know exactly where the top of my pockets are going to lay. So then I don't have to really think about it too much. So something like that. And then I grab my pencil if I can find one. I know I had one here somewhere. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's see. Let's use this to hold it up. So then I'm just going to do a line 
right across here and right across here so you see how I'm just marking the top of each of these pockets and you'll see exactly how this is going to work for me in a second again there's no perfect measurements on here it's just kind of what you think is right for you so see now I have these little pencil marks here so now when I take these off and I decide to come back I know that I'm gonna glue this one here and then I'll look for my next pencil mark and I'll know that that's where my next layer is gonna go on so let's start gluing this down and show you exactly what I'm talking about so again I'm just gonna crease these score them really well because I want them to be able to stay on and all we're going to do is we're again going to take our craft glue and we're just going to put a really thin layer on here and just kind of smear it on I kind of just put it along the center of can you guys see that like that because when I press it down it's going to kind of ooze a little bit out to the side so that works really good So we're just going to put it here like that. Okay, so there goes our first layer. And now we'll go ahead and again crease these little score lines really well. And then again, just glue the center here. And now you see I have my second line right here. So I'm just going to layer it on top of here. And one thing um, to keep in mind for you guys, um, when you're doing it this particular way, you start from the top to the bottom. I, I forgot to mention that earlier, if you guys didn't notice that right away. Because you're layering the pockets on top of each other, and the openings are this way. So always stop, start from the top and work your way down. Hey, Dee Dee. We're working on a mini album. All right, so again, don't worry, DDB, miss it. We're recording it. Just make sure you don't get any in the hole, because then, ah, I just cut myself earlier. And you don't want to put glue on your cuts, because it doesn't feel good. <laughs> OK, so here goes that other little marking that I made. And now I'm just going to line it right there. And then here goes the fourth one. And you guys can see that I'm already putting it down and I'm not putting very much pressure on it and they're not lifting. I'm just gonna go ahead and go like this just so that I know that it's nice, nicely adhered down. And you'll notice how quickly the craft glue will, will glue, will um, dry. It works really, really awesome. So I'm just creasing this one really well. Okay. This is our last pocket for this side, and then I'll do the other side really quick. And then we'll go ahead and put our little mats in the center, and then I'll do um, the embellishing of the front. And again, there goes my other little line mark, and I'll just line it up right there. And there goes my last pocket. So I'll, ah, and my hair. So I'll just look up for a second and see if you guys have any questions. I'm sure at this point, um, Christina has answered most of your questions. So all right, so it looks like no one has any questions. So now we'll start again on the other side. So. Creasing. Oh, maybe I should open the bottle again. And again, just lining it up with those lines that I made previously. See, I have the line right there. And that's just going to help to make sure that everything matches up perfectly. Now 
and again looking for that line. Just make sure I crease this really well. Okay. And again, we're just creasing. <laughs> Oh, you know, one thing that I forgot to do was I forgot, and I did this previously, I forgot to glue in the ribbon. So here goes, I missed that part. So here goes the ribbon I used, I'm going to use for this one. It's just um, twine, I'm sorry, twill. So I'm just cutting a piece and we're kind of going backwards, but assume that I would have done that before I glued all this down. So it basically can either go underneath this layer here on the front. And I'm just going to kind of lift it up a little bit in the center. Because the paper is so thick, um, it shouldn't be an issue. I want to make sure that I didn't forget to do that. Actually, this is too short. Let's cut a bigger piece. I know I'm on mistake number two <laughs> and I'm gonna use 450 for this um you don't have to but um, I like using 450 on anything that's fabric so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up in here a little bit right and just add some 450 and then I'm just gonna put the ribbon in there And I think that's good. You see? So now it's in there and it'll glue down really quick. And then we'll open up the back as well. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't um, open it after the fact, but if you have to, you can. Am I even squeezing glue out? Okay. And let's make sure I line it perfectly. Okay, so see, quick fix. So now we have our two ribbons that are going to be what we're going to use for tying it down. <laughs> All right, back to where we were. So now I'll put my 450 to the side. Now I'm just going to press down, make sure it's nice in there. Grab my craft glue again and finish putting this last two pockets in here. Okay, and again, lining it up with those pencil marks that we put there. And just one more pocket to go. So not too bad. I think we're 40 minutes in, and we did a lot of talking. So you see, it's pretty quick to do this. If if you weren't doing the talking and you had everything pre-cut, you could probably knock this out in probably like 15 minutes, believe it or not. And if you use your 450, it would it would be dry and ready to give um, to someone by now. And then this last pocket, just line it up with the lines. And you see now, everything matches up really perfectly. That's exactly the, what I was going for. So here we go. And now, if you want, I don't know what I did with it right now. Where did, I did, where did I put it? Oh, here it goes. If you want, you can go ahead and erase your pencil marks. And then it's literally ready to go. I want to make sure I don't forget to show you that you need to erase the pencil marks. <laughs> So there goes that. Now I need to find my little wipey that I keep out here. Okay, I know you guys are going to make fun of me, but you see this wiping? It's so yucky and dirty, but it's I keep it out here, and it's what I use to clean everything. So I kind of recycle my wipes. <laughs> so now let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and make the little, um, the little mats that go in the pockets. And I don't 
think I measured these out, but I'll show you what they are now. I'll just measure them really quickly. And then here go these. I'm not going to make all eight of them because I just want to give you um, the measurements for it. And then we'll make the other ones um, later. Hey, Jess. Hey, better late than never, right? <laughs> so this is three and a half. Okay, three and a quarter by three and a half is what we have. And let me just make sure that that's exactly, yep, three and a quarter by three and a half. And you're going to um, cut eight of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think eight might have been the one I used as my cheat sheet. <laughs> and then what I used for this was um, this tab punch by McGill. It's just really awesome. Um, I use it for a lot of my mini albums, so it's just this little tab, and that's what I use for the top. So all you're going to do is you're going to fold this tab in half like that, and then where's my little scoring tool, my bone folder, and now I have this little tab that goes like this. And then you're just going to, again, grab your, four, um, your craft glue, and I know I keep using the craft glue. Um, but you can easily use 450 or you can even use the Helmer Acid Free Glue for this. It works perfectly. The only reason why I'm going with the um, the craft glue right now is because I just find it easier to kind of use the one glue at this point. But um, you can easily use those. So then we're just going to put the tab on the corner like this. Yeah, I know. I've seen this punch a million times and, when, and I finally decided that I needed it. So... This is um this is where I put the little tab and then I used my fine liner pen to just do a little um, stitching along the edges. I'm not gonna do so kind of just like that and then you have just like a little fine stitching and then you want to do it on the back too if you want and then if you want to stamp on here you can put images or again put photos so these could just become mats so. So it goes in here like that, right? And then obviously the other ones go in here as well. So you see how quickly this, this has dried up so that I can already put in my papers. And I don't have to worry about the glue getting everywhere and making a big old mess of my project. At this point, I just need to finish putting the little tabs on it and maybe even put a little sentiment. And my little file folder pockets are done. What did I do here? I think this is the wrong size, this one. Oh no, say it's right size. And then I'll put my instructions in here too because that was the eighth piece of paper that I used. <laughs> so let me show you again what it looks like in the one that I made previously. And then I just kind of alternate it so that it looks um, separate. And then here you can just put like a sentiment or a writing, something writing or journaling, anything you want to do. So there's the inside complete. And now we're going to go ahead and do the front, which is the easiest part of it. <laughs> so now, oh, now I need my measurements again. Let me pull them out of the pocket. <laughs> so let's see what I did here. Um, here we go. So we have a piece of black, piece of patterned and <laughs> a piece of white and you guys will notice that when I made my previous one I did the black and then I did just the white with the stamping but I didn't do pattern I decided you know what I need to do pattern I don't know why I skipped that so for this one I decided to do the pattern so now let me give you the measurements on this and this again it doesn't have to be what I measured but it's what I used for my project so this mat the black is going to be three by four and three quarters Good night, Sandy. So this one is three by four and three quarters. The pattern, and again, they're all a quarter and inch shorter. So this one's two and three quarters by four and a half. So that's going to go in there. And then this piece, which we're going to stamp, is going to be two and a half by four and a quarter. So that's the piece that's going to go right there. So you see how that's going to layer up on there? 
So now the next thing I'm going to do is, oh, I didn't ink this. Let's ink it up. Ink up the green. Okay. So now we'll glue this onto the black. Okay. So we're going to glue this right here in the center. <laughs> You're writing all of your employee manual. Oh, <laughs> if you have any questions about the, the sizes, just send me an email. I'll send them to you. <laughs> so let me move this over because now we're going to do a little bit of stamping, which is kind of my favorite thing to do. So let me see what I did with that block because I have a big old giant block here. So for this particular project, I decided that I'm going to use this vertication. If you guys haven't noticed, I love using um, Unity for images. So Unity Stamps, this is the Donna Downey Free to Be, and it has this ginormous um, birdcage on here. I use it all the time. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but look at the size of the stamp. It's literally the size of my hand. It's huge. And then I'm going to use uh, my stamp set, which is uh, the Kinder Stampo, which one is this one? The Vintage Love. And I'm going to be using the sentiment that says, where is it? Today, Tomorrow, and Forever. So I'm going to use that sentiment for this. And that one's on here. So let me just move all these sentiments. And I'm going to use um, Stays On Ink for inking this up. So let's just, this is just a piece of scrap paper I have laying here because I'm not going to put the whole stamp on here. I'm just kind of offsetting it. So isn't that huge? <laughs> so here goes my Stays On. And hopefully it'll come all perfect. So I do, um, I put the stays on on reverse. So I put my stamped image in, image on the block. And then I put on the ink. So if you do it the other way, it's fine too. That's just the way that I like to do it. And I tend to leave my, my pad on there backwards as well. So now I'm just going to take it and here goes my piece of white paper. You guys can't see it, but... I'm just going to put this towards the bottom and kind of leave a quarter of an inch off to the side and just press down. Good night, Tinker. Thank you so much for joining. So I'm just pressing down really well because, of course, because I'm doing it on the show, it's not going to show the whole thing, right? <laughs> so now I'm just going to lift it and let's pray that it came out. Yep, perfect. So you see how gorgeous the image is? It's just super beautiful. So now we'll move this big hunker of a stamp to the side. And then let me show you what I did. I went ahead and I grabbed, um, I'm going to do some masking here. And what I did was I pre-cut another stamp image. So you basically stamp it on a piece of paper and then you cut it, you fuzzy cut it. And then I put some double-sided tape on the back of here or any kind of like um, removable adhesive works really well and then I'm just going to go ahead and cover up the birdcage with it so we're covering it up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my distress ink and I'm going to ink this up so basically what I'm trying to create is just a shadow around the birdcage you know what let me move this white paper so you guys can see this a little bit better okay So we're just going to swirl on here. And I'm just putting brown around the edge. And I'm putting it on a little heavy because I'm going to be um, putting some distress ink. Also, once I take this, um, this mask off, I just want this layer around it to be a shadow so it'll be a little darker. So now we'll go ahead and remove this mask. You guys see that? And then I'm going to go ahead and also kind of color this area down here just as dark because I want just the birdcage part of it to be the lighter. So you see, I kind of just rubbed on to match that. And I'm going to cover up the chain as well. 
like that. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and take the exact same um, dabber and I'm just going to rub on top really lightly. So now I'm just adding a little bit of this dressing to the center of my image. So now everything is kind of blending in. And now it's a nice shadow and you don't see any of that stark white. So can you guys see that? So really easy to do. Really, really easy to do. and just adds a really nice effect to your projects. So now we'll go ahead and grab this and just glue it on here. Again, just grabbing my craft glue. I'm just going to glue this on here. And there goes that. And now here goes the front of our project. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the center. And that's what I went ahead and used my zap dots, my quarter inch ones. I have a package that's already open, so I'll use that one instead. And I think I'd probably use like six or eight of these on here. Um, I want it to really pop up, and I want folks to be able to touch it and play with it and not worry about it getting bent out. So, and these zap dots are really inexpensive. I don't know, they're probably like $2 and a couple of cents, probably something like that. So, I use them very freely because they're not really expensive. So, so I went, what's this? I used eight of them on here. Yeah, I love these. So then you just kind of pull off the little backing on here. And then let's just throw that out. And then I'm going to put this kind of right in the center. So the, there goes our image. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper. And I've got tons of scrap paper here. Let's see. Tons of scrap paper. Move this over to the side. And I just grabbed the Today, Tomorrow, and Forever um, sentiment. And then again, I'm going to use my stays on for this. And we're just going to ink up the sentiment. And then we're going to press it down on here. And pull it off. And then you see we have that really crisp, vintage -y sentiment that says today, tomorrow, forever. You notice how I left a little bit of space on the left and the right because I'm going to make a little um, banner. So this is all freehand. I'm just cutting it with my scissors. Yep, these are half inch, but I'm going to be using the quarter inch as well. So you can use... Um, you can use your trimmer for this to cut this out, but I like pre-cutting sometimes because I think, again, that kind of adds to the distressed look of the project. So just pre-cutting this sentiment. And then I'm just going to cut at an angle so that it's kind of like a little ribbon um, or a little banner edge like that. And let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. So you guys can see this a little bit better now. Boy, I have quite a mess going on on my desk. <laughs> okay. And then again, I'm just going to cut at an angle and have that. So now we have this, right? We have this little corner. And then again, I'm going to grab my Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And I'm going to ink the whole thing up. And it doesn't matter if there's big blotches of the ink on it here. This is supposed to look distressed. So just fill it up like that. And then the next thing I do is I just junk it up. So I'm going to just crinkle it up so that it looks like it's been here for a long time. So I'm kind of creating these creases on here. And then I take again my Tim Holtz Distress Ink and I kind of rub it on there because I want the crease marks 
to have a little bit more color. So they look darker when I put it down. So this is going to go like this. And then we have this gorgeous flower that's going to go here like this. And our little bird. So let's start putting these down um, in order. So I'm going to use some, let's see, do I have a package that's open? No, I don't. So I'll use these zap dots to put down the banner. And I'm going to probably use four of them. These are the um, quarter inch. I love these. They're super small and perfect for this type of project. So I just put them randomly on here. You missed the bird. <laughs> the bird you can find also on my um, my page. I have them available at my store if you guys haven't seen them yet. It's just a fun collection of vintage findings. And I love um, the fact that um, the Hellmar Scrap Dots works awesome to hold them down on projects. I don't know if you guys have heard, but um, Marion Smith, who also teaches for Prima, has a collection of charms as well, and it's the only thing she uses because it just holds everything down really perfect. So we'll put it down like this. So just kind of offset so it looks like it's there. And then I'm going to put this sweet little bird charm on here, and I'm going to tuck his the, um, the bird's tail under here, and I know that I have to just move the zap dot a little bit so that I can put exactly where. Okay, so I'm going to tuck it in under here so it looks like the, um, the bird is kind of floating underneath the banner. So we'll use our scrap dots for this. Let's see, and we're just going to put a little blob on here. You don't need to put a lot. Just a little bit. It works perfectly. So this is one of those things that you don't have to go crazy with. So there goes our little bird. You guys see that? So now it looks like it's hold, it, the banner is kind of caught in between the bird's um, wings. And then I'm going to use my scrap dots again to glue the flower on here. But one thing that I did um, before I put the flower down was I grabbed some stickles in, um, in silver. So this, I don't know what color this is, but it's a silver color. And I'm just going to do a little line around um, the black parts of the birdcage so that it just gives it a little bit of shimmer. And I'm just kind of randomly layering it on here. So again, just some really random lines. And then just a little heavier on the darker lines. And I'm just, you see, I'm just going really lightly on it. Let me see, can you guys see that? So now there's a really sweet shimmer to the birdcage. Just makes it look a little more surreal, right? And then I'm going to, the stand, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of heavier sparkles. So wherever it's the darkest black is where I put the heaviest amount of stickles. Wherever it's the lightest, I put um, the lighter amount of stickles. I just think it gives it a really nice dimension. So, okay. So let me just show you that. I don't know. I think it's platinum. Could it be platinum maybe? So let me see if you guys can see that. Can you see that now? See all of the stickles on there? So there's that. And then here goes the flower. So I'm going to glue the flower on here. And I'm going to use scrap dots for this because this works awesome for holding these flowers. So I'm going to put a big old glob of scrap dots on here like this. And remember, it dries clear, so you can be generous with it. So you see, there goes the scrap dots. And then 
I'm going to just plop this puppy on here. So you see, now my flower is ah, standing on there perfectly. I'll turn it to the side. You see this thing is not going anywhere. I'll shake it. I always love doing this in the shows, shaking, shaking up the projects and showing how it's not falling off, yet it's not dry. So if I decided that I wanted to make it look more catty corner so it's more on an angle, I can still shake it and it's not moving. And then I decide I want to move it more to the right and shake it. It's not moving. <laughs> but this time I want it to be perfectly um, centered. So now it's perfectly centered. And then the last thing I do is I'm going to put some of this kind of crystal. I think this one is icicle. I'm pretty sure it's icicle because I think it's my favorite color. I just always forget the name. <laughs> Shake, shake, shake your Helmar thing. <laughs> and then I'm just going to, ah, of course, now my glossy, ac uh, my glossy accents, my stickles are just running away from me. So now I'm just going to put this along the edges of the petals. So this is just, again, just adding a little bit more detail to your project. And I just love how it looks when it dries up because it just looks like, um, kind of like, um, iced sugar, kind of. So I'm just doing this just along the edges of each of these little petals. And you see how the, the, the scrap dots is holding it up really well. I'm not having any issues as I'm doing this. So you can always do the stickles before you glue it down or you can put the stickles after you glue it down. It doesn't really matter because it's not going to mess with the glue if you do it after. So, And remember because it, the scrap dots um, has some flexibility in, in dry time. If it moves a little or shifts a little, you can always fix it. So I'm up to my very last two petals, I think. Yep, here we go. There goes my last petal. And I'm going to take my little bow here, close it up, and it's done. You guys see it? Let me zoom out again. So what do you guys think? Do you like it? And I'll open it up again so you guys can see the inside. And you see how all of this is already perfectly adhered. This ribbon is not going to come off. And then when you open up inside, you have the pockets, which you can obviously do a lot more embellishing in if you wanted to. So just lots of fun. Well, don't tell anybody, but I'm actually going to give this one to Tracy. <laughs> so... That's kind of why I wanted to make sure I used a lot of the Helmer adhesives so she can actually um, use it as one of her featured projects. So <laughs> it was kind of a two-in-one for me. But I love this paper. It's just really pretty. And again, super easy. Eight, who would have thought just an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and just a bunch of scraps um, to make it. And I'll show you the one that I made previously. Here goes the yellow version. So you you know that you can make this in any color. You can embellish the front any way you like. I love that. Um, just really fun. And then see this one has this one. I made all of the file pockets in it because I didn't um I didn't have a chance to I didn't want you guys to have to watch me make them for this one. But they're really easy to do. You don't know which one you like better. Okay, we can do a contest. Which one do you like better? <laughs> The peach and pink or the green yellow? <laughs> I 
Who makes a tab stamp? The tab stamp is by Miguel. I don't know if you guys know. You're loving the yellow one? <laughs> Christine, I can't tell you what I'm bringing you. <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Yeah, the white, it's actually a white flower, and it's, um, I distressed it with some yellow. So it's yellow, and then it has the same icicle stickles on it. Yep, McGill makes this punch. And if you guys didn't know, um, I'm only on two design teams, um, because I can't imagine being on any more than that right now. But um, I'm on the Helmar design team because I love um, Helmar Adhesive, and I, I am a punch junkie. So I'm very fortunate to be on the McGill team, and the reason why I'm heading to CHA is because I'm going to be teaching a resale class for McGill. So I'll be teaching a two-hour class for them, um, and of course I'll be using my Helmar adhesives for that. So I can't wait. Just super excited about that. You're following me on my blog. Oh, thanks, Linda. <laughs> so I hope you guys um, enjoyed this class. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording but if you guys have any questions I'll stay on for a few more minutes and um, give you whatever information you guys need okay so thank you so much for watching tonight